What's good? Happy Monday. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles. Now a lot to get to on today's show. According to all accounts, Jordan Davis is making major strides throughout this offseason as he enters a pivotal year two, set to take on a monster role within this defense, taking over for Javon Hargrave. Quez Watkins also turning some heads. He needs to turn in a big 2023 campaign. And do the Philadelphia Eagles have Jadavian Clowney interest? We'll dive into that as well. But first, today's show is sponsored by True Classic. 25% off your order if you use the promo code chat. I'm wearing one of their polos right now. They're essential nine pack, only $13.88 per tee. And Father's Day is just around the corner. And it's time to find a gift that dad will actually love. This year, give him the gift of style and comfort with True Classic. Their ultra soft, perfectly fitted tees are just the beginning. True Classic has everything you need to build a complete wardrobe, from button downs to Henleys to polos. And their latest comfort jeans and chinos are a must-have for anyone who looks to look sharp and feel comfortable at the same time. But True Classic isn't just about clothes. They also have a line of active shirts, shorts, and joggers that are perfect for anyone who needs to stay comfortable while staying active like myself. I wear their shorts when I run. I wear some of their boxer briefs as well. They are fantastic, and they allow me to put in those low mile times. And if you're not completely satisf satisfied with your purchase, they offer a 100% risk-free guarantee, and easy returns. But the best news about all of this is we have a great deal for the Fly Eagles Fly family. Don't forget to use our promo code chat at trueclassic.com slash chat to not only get 25% off your order plus free shipping, but also if your purchase is over $100, you get that free shipping as well. Give a gift that dad will actually love this Father's Day and gift him with some true classic tees. This is one of the polos. This is that athletic material. They have the cotton-based polos, which are really soft as well. Their t-shirts are great. And like I said, their boxer briefs and their shorts. All of their products, fantastic. Trueclassic.com slash chat for that deal to apply. Let's begin here with Jordan Davis. According to Greg Cosell, who is probably one of the most respected NFL film evaluators. He has spoken to multiple people across the National Football League, and they have told him that Jordan Davis has made major progress this offseason as he enters a pivotal sophomore campaign. Davis is slated to take over as the starting defensive tackle alongside Fletcher Cox after Javon Hargrave signed that four-year, $84 million contract with the San Francisco 49ers. And this comes after Jordan Davis, as a first-round pick, only registered 216 defensive snaps in his first professional season. You look at the Eagles' first-string defensive line, this is what it figures to be. Brandon Graham had 11 sacks last year. Hassan Reddick had 16. That's your starting defensive end and Sam linebacker. Fletcher Cox did have seven sacks a year ago in 2022. Can he continue to elevate and play good football as he gets longer in the tooth. Josh Schwett had a career year as well as he turned in 11 sacks. And could Jordan Davis be next, turning in an all-pro caliber campaign? If that's the case, or even if he's a Pro Bowl level player or just really solid as Eagles defensive line, which I have continued to say might be the deepest in the NFL, could once again be the best in the NFL. They had 70 sacks last year to lead the NFL. That was 15 more than any team. Unfortunately, no sacks in the Super Bowl, but that's because of Sodgate. Davis's pro football focus grades last year, he actually graded out to be a pretty solid player. I understand it was on those 218 overall snaps all throughout the season. Did have that injury too, which held him back a little bit that he suffered against the Pittsburgh Steelers. 71.4 on the overall grade. Run defense grade of 71.8. Those are his strengths there. Pass rush is not his strength. That's where he needs to elevate and uptick his game to a certain degree. 59.4. But with more snaps... With more PT, could that go up? Let's hope so. His numbers last year, did play in 13 games, five starts, 18 tackles, one tackle for loss, one pass breakup. But I've continued to say this about Jordan Davis, right? 
Jordan Davis just when he's on the field is a problem. Why is that? He demands a double team every single time he's on the defensive line pretty much because he is 6'6", 330 pounds. And if he's occupying two offensive linemen, what does that allow everybody else to do along the defensive line? It allows them to get those one-on-one -on -one matchups so that Hassan Reddick can break free from the outside and turn in a 16-sack season so that Brandon Graham can have a career-high 11 sacks coming off the torn Achilles. Josh Sweat can turn in 11 sacks as well. When Jordan Davis gets double-teamed, he occupies so much attention at the center of that defensive line on the interior it's advantageous for everybody else along that defensive line because they get advantageous mismatches. Now, Howie Roseman a couple of months ago did say this about Jordan Davis because a lot of people were calling him a bust, saying he wasn't worth that first-round pick. And I am going to put trust in Howie Roseman's talent evaluation. Why is that? Because the last couple of years, he's been the best general manager in the sport. He said, that guy's got a head of steam. How are you stopping Jordan Davis? Last year, going through the draft, my perspective was Jordan Davis 10 years ago would have been a top three pick. So you're going through it, and you're like, why is this guy falling? And everyone's going, well, he only played 40% of the time at Georgia. Why is that, though? The guy won the Lombardi and Outland trophies. He was top 10 in the Heisman Trophy voting with the best defense in the country that won the national championship game. And so you're going, what are we missing here? He's a freak show athlete. What are we missing? Good character? Check. Yeah, he was a captain at Georgia. Unbelievable personality. So you're going, what is going on here? And it's like, oh, he can't play on third down. To me, it was a situation where it's like, why is he playing 40 to 50% of the plays? Well, really, look at the games that Georgia was in last year. Georgia was winning 42-7 in the third quarter. Most of those games, and they were smart, they have all these five-star recruits, and we've got to get these guys here so that we don't lose them a year from now when Jordan leaves. So we need to play them. And in the close games, in the national championship, he's playing 60% of the plays. So when I look at that, I'm going, man, that is an opportunity to draft Jordan Davis and have him be an impact player. And for this defense in 2023, there are going to have to be a couple of young players who take those strides forward. I think Jordan Davis and Kobe Dean, both from Georgia, are going to be able to turn in big sophomore campaigns. Jordan Davis has all the potential. He needs to prove that he can be a three-down player. At Georgia, he wasn't. But why was that? Is that because Georgia wanted to put in a lot of their five-star younger recruits so that they could get some playing time, put some good reps on tape so that they don't transfer in the future? Is it because Georgia was blowing out a bunch of teams in the SEC so Kirby Smart and the defensive staff decided to sit Jordan Davis later in those games? He's 6'6", 330 pounds. Jordan Davis has all of the physical tools to be a dominant player in this league. And last year, when he was playing on that defensive front for Philadelphia on those 218 snaps, you could see in that small sample size that he was a game wrecker. He would occupy the attention of two offensive linemen, allowing other defensive linemen along that Eagles front to get one-on-one -on -one matchups. And as we project forward, if that's the case here in 2023, that means that Hassan Reddick, Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham are going to be able to turn in big sack numbers. And with more playing time, is Jordan Davis going to be able to be a more consistent player and able to increase his workload, and in turn, the stamina then goes up. When you look across the NFL, there aren't a lot of guys with this size and this athleticism who can be a game record. Jordan Davis is one of them. I just think he needs reps to be a star player in this league, and I think he's due for a monster jump here in year two. And if a guy who is as well-respected as Greg Cosell in breaking down tape says, I'm hearing that Jordan Davis has made massive strides this offseason, I'm going to put my stock into that. Be on the lookout for Jordan Davis to have a big year, too, in this Eagles defense. Will he break out in 2023? He's my breakout candidate, or at least one of them. I'm going to submit my B. If you think he's going to be a dud, that's okay. You can disagree with me. We like that discourse here. Let me know in the comments section. From Jordan Davis and the buzz around him to Quez Watkins and the buzz surrounding him. This is the buzz out there. The Quez Watkins has put in a really good offseason, and he looks really good. Joe Castro, who covers the Eagles, he does some YouTube work as well. Shout out to him staying on that grind. Best of luck to you, Joe Castro. He said, Quez Watkins is looking very good at camp from what I'm hearing. Heard he added some muscle. 
and the routes look very refined. Revenge season activated. That's good to hear because it's easy for pro athletes to not be accountable. Look no further in this city than a guy like Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid. They never wanted to or do own up to their failures. Quez Watkins after the season did. He took accountability after having what he called a disappointing year three. He took accountability for missing that catch in the Super Bowl, which very well could have brought back a second Lombardi trophy to the city of brotherly love for the second time since 2017. He owned up to his failures. And if the report is true that he's added some muscle, that his routes are refined, that only means that this Eagles offense is going to get yet another lethal weapon alongside Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. Because Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown, as a wide receiver duo, you can make the argument they're the best wide receiver duo in the National Football League. And they have refined games where they have a well-rounded route tree. They can be used goal line to goal line. They can take the top off of the defense, but they are also very good at picking up yards after the catch. If you add a vertical threat to this Eagles offense, and Quez Watkins is more consistent this year than he was last year, then that gives Jalen Hurts another weapon to throw to. And when you think about it, when you have a guy like Quez Watkins with that burning speed to stretch the field vertically, what does that mean? Everything else underneath and from sideline to sideline and in between the numbers opens up for a Devontae Smith, an A.J. Brown, and a Dallas Goddard. Quez needed to add some size. So if he did that, that's great. He already has the speed. He needed to add refined route running to his arsenal as well to just make him a more complete player. And if he did that going into year four, I think you'll see an uptick in production and an uptick for this Eagles offense. With what Quez did in his first three years, we have seen the flashes in 2020, made a couple of nice plays, especially in training camp and in the preseason. In 2021, he was able to be that explosive threat. But in 2022, he was no doubt a disappointment. Let me put you to the test here with this poll question. Bigger season this year. Quez Watkins, year four. Jordan Davis, year two. QW for Quez, JD for Jordan Davis. And as you venture down there, do the smart thing. Subscribe to the show, especially if you think the Eagles are better than the Dallas Cowgirls. That right there is a reason to subscribe on top of entertaining, insightful, informative, year-round coverage of the Philadelphia Eagles. Lock us in and subscribe. Let's round out today's show with this. Could the Eagles sign Jadavion Clowney? This is a rumor out there. I was searching the internet, putting the show together. I saw this and I was like, it's too juicy not to talk about. Could Howie Roseman get aggressive and sign Jadavion Clowney as a depth piece. I'm still not over him knocking out Carson Wentz in the playoffs back in 2019, but we can try to get past it together. Here's what Heavy.com said on their NFL page about Clowney here. The move is admittedly a bit of a luxury for Philadelphia, but few positions are more valuable in the NFL than pass rushers. Clowney remains a free agent, and the longer the pass rusher is available, the cost for the Eagles or another team to snag the former Pro Bowler likely continues to drop. Eagles general manager Howie Roseman has not shied away from taking chances by making controversial moves. I'm not sure this would be all that controversial. It would be aggressive. Honestly, though, I'm good. Clowney seems kind of cooked. I understand that he's only a couple of years removed from having a double-digit sack season, but you're already really deep along that defensive line. Where would Jadavion Clowney fit in? Unless there's an injury. If there's an injury, then... I'm intrigued. You look at his numbers here. In 2021, nine sacks. So not quite double digits, as I said. Fake news! In 2020, 12 games played with Cleveland, two sacks. In 2020, it was a disastrous season for him in Tennessee. They signed him to that deal. He did nothing because he was injured and the production was not good. And then in 2019 with the Seahawks, 10 tackles for loss, three sacks. He can be a game changer. He can alter games with his ability strictly to just demand attention. He has never lived up to the expectations of being that number one pick to the Houston Texans, but he's had a solid career. Not a Hall of Fame career, but a solid career. Some people might say it's a disappointment. I agree, but still been a very, very good player in spurts throughout his career. What would you do with your Davion Clowney? I'm going to go P for pass here. I've just got to do it. As for sign, if you want to disagree with me once again, share your thoughts with us. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll catch you next time here on the show. And as always, go Birds.